Hey everybody, it's Josh here. In this tutorial, I'm gonna show you guys how to create a sleek little MailChimp email signup section for your Divi website. What we're gonna do is we're gonna create essentially what I have on the front page of my site where the person has the ability to put the name, email, and click the submit button to get automatically added to my email list. Now, a couple things I wanna point out before we dive in. I use MailChimp and that's what this tutorial is gonna be based off of, but the same coding that we create and the same methods and practices we have here, you could probably use for uh, constant contact or something similar. And then lastly, before we dive in, I do wanna point out that Elegant Themes has a plugin called Bloom, which is a, another really good way to capture emails. You can do pop-ups and things like that. Like that but what we're going to do in this tutorial is i'm going to show you what i use which is a free plugin for mailchimp and wordpress and it's just called mailchimp for wordpress it's what i've used for years it's highly highly rated it's great very user friendly you can customize it and it's very reliable so this is what we're going to use now let's go ahead and dive right in so what i'm going to do is in my test site here I've got a section right here where I'm saying, hey, join the cool club, and we wanna put a sign up section right under this, very similar to my site where we have name, email, sign up. So what you wanna do first is you wanna go ahead and download this plugin. It is free, and I'll make sure you have the link to this. So you wanna download that, and then once you have that activated or uploaded in your site, you're gonna to wanna to go ahead and activate it. And when you do, once you activate it, you'll see automatically on your left toolbar, it's gonna to pop up and it's gonna say MailChimp for WP. You're gonna go ahead and click that. And the first thing that you're gonna to wanna to do is you're going to want to integrate your API key. So if you're not familiar with where to get that, you can just click the API key. You need to have a MailChimp account. You need to be logged in. And once you do, you'll be able to go into extras, API keys, and it'll give you a key that you can put in right here. So once you have your API key, it's time to build the form. So we're gonna go ahead and click into form. And right now, I don't have anything in here. I think by default, it has some fields in there, but I'm gonna recommend you just wipe that clean and I'm gonna show you how to build this. And you can even take this code and just paste it in here and I'll show you exactly how we're gonna do this. So we're gonna start out by adding a first name. For the field label, we actually wanna take the labels completely off because the labels are gonna add like you know first name on top or beside this and email address right here so we actually don't want any labels at all so we're going to take that out placeholder is what's going to be in that field so we're going to say just name we don't need to put anything in the value and we do want to make this a required field and we don't want to wrap this in any extra paragraph tags or any extra html code so we're going to go ahead and add to form and you can see there we've got our first little field so that's looking good now we want to go ahead and add an email address Again, we don't want the field label. We're gonna go ahead and put email in the placeholder. That's obviously required because it needs an email and we don't wanna wrap that in paragraph tags. And then finally, let's add another space and we wanna add a submit button. Instead of subscribe, let's say get the goods or something like that. And we don't wanna wrap that in tags. And there we go. So we've got our form built. And I'm gonna walk you through what all these little things mean and more importantly, how to style this. So let's go ahead and save changes. And you're gonna notice that once this is saved, at the bottom here, it says use this short code. This short code is where we're going to put this in the site. So if I back out to my front page, we wanna put this short code right here. So we're gonna go ahead and use the visual builder. Let's scroll down and I'm using a text module right here, which you could use. What we're gonna do is we're gonna duplicate this just so I can give this module its own spacing and everything. So you can see right here that text. I'm just gonna replace this. I'm gonna make sure this is in the text view and not the visual. You could also use the code module for this, but for this example, we're just gonna stick with that. We're gonna save that. And now once that's saved, let's go ahead and back out. Okay, and you can see that indeed, there is the contact form. It doesn't look great right now, but that's where we're gonna add some fun CSS styling and we're gonna really bring this thing to life. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna bounce over here to my style sheet. And a lot of you have asked for a tutorial on how I do this. My next tutorial, I promise, is gonna be how I uh, edit my style sheet directly. So just keep an eye out for that. It's gonna be very soon, but I've got some code saved. Okay, and we're gonna paste the code. Okay, so it's pasted in there. Now you're gonna see quite a bit of code. And the reason I pasted this all in there together is I'm gonna walk you through how to customize this so we don't have to do everything from scratch. We don't want this to be in our tutorial. So let me go ahead and save that. Now let me show you what this looks like. Before I refresh this, because the new styles are gonna come into place, you can see that 
I, and I just right clicked inspect element since I'm using Chrome like I always do in all my tutorials. You can see here that in this little section, it's got a class of this MC4 WP form fields. And you can see all these in here. Essentially what I've done in the code is you can see each one of these fields has this form class ahead of it. So it knows all of these fields are gonna adjust each one of these classes. Now, one more thing I wanna show you is that in the actual code for the form, it has a type. This type right here where it says text, email, submit, that is what's going to be in each one of these fields. So you can see it's calling that MailChimp signup form, it's the input field, and you can see right here, this is the text field, this is the email field, this is the submit field, and I'm gonna show you how to adjust the hover over. So with this saved, and with that saved, let's go ahead and back out here. Let's refresh our site, and we should see a completely nice different look. And there we go. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you how to edit this yourself. So again, we've got the name field, the email field, and the submit. This is pulling this code that I have saved right here. So if I wanted to test this out and say background color black instead of white, what that's gonna do is change the background color on this name field, which happens to be our text field. So check this out. We're gonna go ahead and refresh, and there we go. Not a great look, but just wanted to show you what I meant there. So let's go ahead and uh, Command Z and go back there. So this is essentially how we're gonna set up this main field. Now, again, what you're gonna do is you're gonna actually go in and you can tweak this yourself. I have this set to where you could adjust this, but let's say we want to change the color on the submit button. Let's go ahead and refresh here. Okay, so it's looking good. Let's say instead of that green, we want to do maybe a yellow. Again, I just right click and inspected that element. You can see that there's a nice background color on it. I'm just gonna choose a different color. You know, if we wanted to do maybe a lighter green or, or like a pretty vibrant yellow, you could do that right here. But again, you can basically just go in here and tweak the color that I have in the settings that I have. Now, one thing I do wanna point out is that each one of these, very importantly, has a width to it. So let's go ahead and look at the name field here. You're gonna notice that this has a current width that I put in there of 32%. This whole section is based off 100% to where it's gonna extend to left to right. So each one of these fields is floating left right here and it has a width right now of 32%. If I bump that up, you can see it messes things up a little bit. So we're gonna keep that down to 32%. And if I look at the email field, I think this one's at 31, if I remember correct. Or no, it's actually at 33, okay. So you can see if I bump that down a little bit, that would still work, that looks pretty good. But uh, the way this works and the way I have this styled is each one of these has a very close width to make sure that it doesn't get bumped off the ledge. And then the sign up button here is gonna have a width of 31. If I extend that out too far, you know, 32 might work, but 33 is gonna bump it off so you can see right there. So I'll tell you what I'm gonna do, I'm actually gonna go into my style sheet and we're gonna make that 32 in the submit button instead of that. Now, one thing that I've done with the hover over state, and I apologize, I've got that vibrant yellow instead of the nice green I had there. Oh, you can actually see that 32 did bump it. So let's go back and change this back to 32. I'm sorry, instead of 33. Now we've got those widths set. That should look much, much better. Okay, cool, cool. Now, so that looks good. Again, all you guys have to do is take the code that I've set for you and you can adjust things. You can go in and adjust the padding and if you wanna add colors or add effects, you're more than welcome to. Again, this is the name field, this is the email field, this is the sign up button, and this is the hover over. Right now we've got a hover over of that dark purple, the same purple that I have in the header, but you could change that and make it your own. So what we wanna do here, of course it's looking good on desktop, but I know what you're gonna say, what about mobile? You can see once we scroll in here, things get a little janky around right here. So don't worry, I've got some more code saved and I'm gonna show you what we're gonna do here. Okay, so with this code, I'm gonna go ahead and paste this in here. What I'm gonna do is I'm giving this a scary media query, which is basically telling this form to change size in the width department once it hits 980. So let's go ahead and save this and I'll show you what this looks like. Okay, so once I have that code in there and it's saved, again, it looks good on desktop, but what we're gonna do is we're gonna see that once we get to 980, and actually let me go ahead and inspect element, and so you can see the pixels up at the top right. Once we scroll this in and we get to 980, those widths are gonna change just a little bit. 
There we go. So once we hit 90, you can see that looks much better. And the way I did that is if I go into my code, you can see that instead of the width being 33%, 32%, it's at 49, 50, and the submit button is at 100. So I can go ahead and inspect element. I can look here, I can see, okay, there's 49. If I were to bump this up a little bit, it's gonna break it. So I've got these set out pretty strategically for you. And what I have is a margin here, so I can adjust the margin right. If it's too much, again, it's gonna bump it. So I have that set pretty much to where it looks good and flush. Now, the, the last thing that we wanna check is, let me go ahead and back out here, and I'm gonna click into the mobile view. So on mobile, here's the final issue, is that it's that code looked good on tablet, but not on mobile. So what I wanna do is let's go into our code here, and let's go ahead and copy this whole section. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna change 980 to 479, which is mobile, and I'm gonna say that I want all of these to go 100%, and I don't want any margin on the right. So we're gonna go ahead and copy the code from there, paste it in the name, email, and the submit button. So now that that's all pasted there, we're gonna go ahead and save. Let's back out here, clear our cache. Okay, and now, looks great on desktop, Let's go ahead and inspect element, and we're gonna pull the mobile view. So now when we scroll down, it should look nice on mobile. And there we go, guys. Now there's one thing I notice here, because it looks good, the width looks good there. The one thing that we wanna do is, on this top form, you can see this looks pretty good here, but we do wanna add maybe a margin on the bottom. So we're gonna say margin bottom to give that some space. Let's try 10 pixels. There we go, that looks perfect. So we're gonna go ahead and copy that. We're gonna put that in the text field and we'll be able to save that and it'll look good for mobile. So that's it guys, you're gonna be able to take the code that I have saved here for you and you're just gonna adjust it. And again, each one of these little labels just corresponds with this little type right here, text, email, submit. And you can even change things in here. You can go in and you can change, instead of get the goods, you could say sign up. Now if we go ahead and go out here and we go ahead and refresh. It should say sign up instead of get the goods. Very cool, easy peasy guys. So again, you can adjust this and make it your own. Last thing I do wanna show you, because this was specifically requested, is let's say you wanna put this in a sidebar. On my site here, if you go to one of my posts, you're gonna see a lot of sidebar action and my sign up form right here is the most prevalent thing. So. We're gonna take this same concept here, but we wanna put this in a sidebar. So let's go ahead and go back here. I'm gonna go to my appearance widgets. And I think I've actually already got this in there. Yeah, so what, what you're gonna see here, let me delete this so you can see it from the start, is when you go to your widgets, with this plugin, it's gonna give you an option right here. So you can just drag this into your sidebar. And let's go ahead and take everything out of here so we just see this. So I'm gonna say newsletter, or let's call this email sign up sign up and we're going to save that now let's go back out to our site and let's do a test post so we have a sidebar so i'm going to call this i'm just going to call this test blog we're going to say test i'm not going to worry about using the divi builder for this we're just going to say test and we can see that the page layout does in fact have sidebar right there we're going to go ahead and just preview this for right now Okay, and you can see that this looks really, really janky. Let me show you what we're gonna do to clean this up. Let's go ahead and right click, inspect element like usual. Now you're gonna notice that it has the same fields here, the same you know CSS classes and everything, but it has one more thing that we can adjust and make better. You're gonna notice that the sidebar has an ID of sidebar. So all we have to do is add this ID before the CSS and then we can change the code to whatever we want. So right off the bat, I know that I don't want this 32% there. This is calling the main code. I wanna make this 100%. And that's gonna look much better. And I also know that it's kinda of hard to see since the background's white. So I wanna try changing the background color, maybe from white to, yeah, maybe just like a light gray right there. So here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna go into my style sheet. I'm gonna pull the name field, the email field, and the submit button and I'm gonna copy all that code, and I'm gonna put it before the media queries. And here's where it gets really fun. I'm actually gonna let myself know that this is the mail, I'm gonna say this is the sidebar MailChimp signup. And all I have to do is add this little sidebar class 
in front of these elements. So I'm gonna give this a an ID, it's actually not a class, I'm sorry, it's an ID, so it's gonna be a pound sign sidebar. And we're gonna add this in front of the email and in front of the sign up and in front of the hover over state. You know what, and actually the hover over state's gonna be the same, so I'm not even gonna worry about that. I'm gonna go ahead and save that now. What did I say? I wanted to make that, what was that, like an F1 color? Yeah, so we're gonna take this F1 color and all I'm gonna change here, since all of this code knows it's already gonna be there, we're just gonna worry about changing the background color and the width. I'm gonna change the background color to that and we want the width to be 100%. I'm gonna do the same thing for the email because I know I'm gonna want that field to look the same. And right off the bat, I know that the, the submit button needs to be a width of 100% as well. That way it looks good in the sidebar. So let's go ahead and save all that. Let's go back out here and refresh and see what this looks like. And there we go, guys. The, and the last thing I'm probably going to do is to add some maybe margins on the bottom of these. So let's do inspect element again. And let's just give this a margin bottom, say 10 pixels. That worked pretty good. Very, very cool. Let's go ahead and take that code and drop it in here in the text field. And we're probably going to want to do the same thing on the email field. Let's try adding margin bottom. Yep, looks beautiful on the sidebar. So we're gonna go ahead and put that in the email field. Save, and there we go, guys, that is it. So now, when I go back out, let me look at the front page and we'll keep this page open. Since I put that ID in there, that sidebar ID, it shouldn't have adjusted the front page signup section. There we go, it looks perfect. So this is gonna look good, it's gonna look good desktop, tablet and mobile right there. Oh, and there's a little section right there. I just noticed that jumped a little bit. So what we might wanna do is you could just go into that media query and I tell you what, I'll just show you. I'm not gonna leave you guys hanging. Let's look at this here. Let's go down. We're gonna go to right here is where it got a little weird. So let's look at the width at 560. Eh, got a little weird, yeah, 560. So instead of 479, let's do 560, save. Let's back out here. Okay, now let's go ahead and refresh the cache. Okay, and now that that's saved, we're gonna see that it looks good on desktop. It's gonna look good on tablet. And if we go in here, it's gonna look good on mobile as well. Let's go ahead and look at the mobile view. And there we go. So it looks good on mobile, desktop, and tablet. And then it also is gonna look good on the sidebar. So that's it, guys. I know it's kind of an extensive tutorial, but again, I just wanted to have this code saved for you that you guys could tweak it and make it your own. All you do is set up the form here in your MailChimp section, and you can use the CSS code that I provided to style it and make it your own. So guys, enjoy creating an awesome email signup section, very similar to what I have on my front page on my site. If you guys have any questions, let me know. Otherwise, enjoy and have some fun.